What's up everybody, my name is Braskus and welcome back to Pathologic Classic HD. So, a couple of things. Number one, thanks to some very helpful comments from several of you, uh, I discovered that the red sky is a graphical bug, and at the request and suggestion of a couple of you, I have also restarted the game. So this is a brand new save file. We have done pretty much everything exactly the same. I just finished killing the butcher, like I did the last time around. The graphical bug is now gone. Uh, I have not spent a whole bunch of extra money on food that I immediately consumed. I did buy some extra food, but only because I seem to remember from suggestions earlier that food is more and more scarce as the days go by, so it's not a bad idea to stock up a little bit on day one. Uh, I've also been digging through trash, which, is, which has resulted in finding a couple of extra trinkets and a whole bunch of bottles, which is super useful because I can fill those up with water and then trade them to the uh, homeless for bandages. So I haven't done that yet because the one guy that I found didn't have any bandages on him, so couldn't really do much with him. Uh, the other suggestion is that this guy had more to say about Isidore's death. And so I talked to him, and that's this right now. Turns out Isidore came to visit him last night before he died. And he said, Note that I am merely retelling it second hand. He said there's an epidemic in the steppe camps. An outbreak of tar Tarbagan sickness, perhaps. The plague, that is. Father, father had issued an order to lock the termentary up to prevent the infection from getting in. Um, do you think Azor had already been infected when he spoke to you? He was wrapped in a cloth and smelled of alcohol. He said these were preventative measures, but I still think he could have done all that just to convince me. After failing to convince my father, it was idiotic for me to fall for it. So he could have already been infected when he visited Simon. We need to warn Reuben. It's very urgent. He's about to examine Simon as soon as the period of time required by the Canes passes. But where is he? I have no idea. Where is he staying? I don't know. There was a secret dissecting room in one of the warehouses, but no one knows where exactly. He used to live mostly in the steppe, sometimes sleeping in the termitary or at Lara Ravel's shelter, but he's not there. I know that for sure. He went away to mourn his master. What would you have done if you were him? Um... I think I'd wait for him at the Canes. Now, can I still talk to you? Or are you just done? There's this thing that needs to be done. There we go. It's over. The Butcher's dead. Uh, best news I've heard in days. So it was him that killed Simon. I doubt that. He's too dumb for that. But he was definitely insane and very dangerous. Well, it's for the best. Uh, this is acceptable if you put it that way, but only that way. That's another thing that I noticed upon replaying this that I may have forgotten. Turning down money from the special named people is actually somewhat insulting to them, so it's better to accept it out of respect for their customs. And one last Easter egg. Thinks Claire is a messenger well, from heaven. this is another comment that was suggested yeah, to right. me. If you click on their name, it tells you who they are and the various people's take on them. Lara says, why does nobody notice how hardworking he is? He works all the time. Everything he does, he does for the family, even if his father won't admit it. Yes, he chose to study the kin instead of the intricacies of economy, and he already knows it way better than his father. He'll grow to be a better manager and a better ruler than would make do without a whip, violence, abuse, victims, and riots. Uh, oh, a better ruler that would make do without, etc., etc. And Vlad says, a high stepper. Instead of settling down and helping me manage the industry, he'd rather dabble in the local fairy tales. The loafer's most refined skill is wasting my money. He's rather quick-witted when it comes to business, I'll grant him that. All the more shame on him for casting everything on his father, and to think he took after me. So, yakety yakety. Okay, what do you think about Simon's death? It is known that Simon had limited his social activity just before his departure. He only received two visitors. I know nothing of the first, but the second was none other than Isidore Barak. The fact that he was killed the same night makes you think, doesn't it? The killer took out a witness? Or an accomplice. Isidore was a complicated man. Have I told you about his position in the kin? He used to be a very well-respected person there, and I can't say everyone liked it. Why would a doctor kill someone? Isidore wasn't a doctor. He was more of an herbalist. He never studied medicine. All his recipes were about plants and roots, so to speak. He was knowledgeable, true. A sorcerer, if you will, but a very different one from Simon. An earthen sorcerer. Uh, well, that's not true. We did hear that before. Simon was a theurgist. Isidore was a witch doctor. And you think the witch doctor has managed to achieve the unachievable? A possible theory, but rather questionable. 
Okay, so now that we've done that, we actually have somewhere else to go. Uh, I think we had to go back to the canes. Uh, Simon Kane, Madam Proper Longevity. Maybe I need to actually check my... Pursuit of a Killer. Here we go. Uh, was murdered. You will be rich. Show me capable of... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, bum, 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 bum. The investigation of a double murder has introduced a few additional considerations. It is highly possible that Simon died to some unfamiliar disease. Stock Rubin, the town medic, should be warned at once. If he touches the body, he may contact whatever disease still remains there. Now, I said he must be waiting at the Canes, so we'll go to the Canes, who are these three up there, and hopefully we'll get there in time. So we just need to head out that way and over to the river. And then we can go across the bridge. Okay, guys, we're back on track. This is exciting. And I will agree, thank you for uh, actually require well, asking me to restart the game and get rid of that bug. This is much more atmospheric. Uh, oh, these are the ruins. I want to keep going past these. One of the, the biggest things is definitely the appearance of things in the distance. Like that over there, you can see there's a tree or a building or something. Looks like trees, probably. And in the red appearance, they would appear as, you know, just like a black silhouette against the sky, which was a little creepy, but didn't really fit, didn't make sense. So this is preferable. Hi there. Um, now, anybody like this that's unimportant, not one of the bound, just doesn't have any uh, special stuff. Shall we barter, perhaps? What do you have? You've got 16 gauge shells, revolver ammo, and rifle ammo. I have a needle. Price one. What are these? Price one, price two, price two. Um, I've also got a razor, but that's probably all she's going to want. Yeah, see, it won't let me barter with anything except that, so I'm good for now. Um, until I have a gun, there's no point buying ammunition for a gun that I, I don't own. And what about you? No, thank you. Okay. I've also learned that different NPCs... You, you can tell what the NPCs are holding by... Um, where the hell am I? Sorry, I'm getting lost here. I think I'm across the river. Okay, that's Evie Yan's place, so I want to keep going up the street here. Um, what I was saying is each individual NPC, their own appearance indicates what they have on them. Let's barter. Lad, have a lot of curious things. You've got Alpha Tablets and Meridorm. But I'm not going to worry about that. So, for example, the guys who look like they've got almost uh, plated clothing, plated overcoats and stuff like that, tend to be the Vagabonds and whatnot that you can use to... Ooh, good. More water bottles. You can use to trade water for bandages. The... Older looking guys with the caps on usually have um, the ability to sharpen your weapon. Uh, some of the grown women NPCs will be able to repair your clothing, but they always seem to do the same things. So it's good to know what the different types of NPC models can do. If I talk to you, are you going to be able to tell me where the In guy is? Old, we become more foolish and more wise. Mm. Okay, I'd like to examine your brother's body. We've sent for Isidore Barak's most accomplished apprentice. His name is Stanislav Rubin. Quite a resolute and talented man, talented man this Rubin is. I have great expectations of him. He will bring everything you need, and you will examine the body together. Um, all right, let me know when Rubin arrives. I would expect him to join you in the evening, no earlier than 11 o'clock, I would say. Why so late? I personally asked him to come no later than midnight. Don't let it worry you. Okay, on several occasions, excessive haste has led to undesirable consequences. The phenomenon that Isidore had invited you here to study, it is in our blood. The physiological trait of our family shows itself from time to time. Quite intriguing. The examination of the body will not help you in any way. This puzzle has to be solved within your mind. I am not able to, or even allowed, to tell you any more than that. Believe me, I am not trying to conceal any evidence from you. The body is kept in the ice house. It is intact, but focus may not be breached. Um, I will wait for the required time, period of time to pass. So they told me 11 o'clock in the evening. 
Now, I think it's only 10 o'clock in the morning, because I kind of blitzed through a lot of stuff here. So, I guess we'll go maybe talk to some other people? I don't know. Was Stanislav one of the guys that I'm supposed to be keeping track of? No. There's the two Stamatins, Victor and Yorgi Kane. Um, and Marina Kane. Marie, Maria? Maria Kana. Eva Yan and Mark Immortel. Okay, so those are all the people I need to be careful of. I said no later than 11 o'clock in the evening. So I'm probably going to more or less hang out till about 11 o'clock. I'm going to go check this little dumpster, though. If he's not here by 11 p.m. or a.m., then I will leave and see if I can't... Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll go look around, see if I can find... You're going to take a look at this. I've been curious about what this thing is for a long time. Other than just a crazy freaking weird structure. I also feel like I should save real fast. Okay. Ooh, Stonehenge just rocks. Um, wow, this is a long way up already. And it's only going to get longer, I would wager. Huh. Some of the other townsfolk, too, said that the children would play around here. Some of them would, but that it made the adults really, really super nervous. Whoa. Okay. Is this just a... It looks like a diagram of this uh, building. Yeah, and here's the stairs. It's like a map. What's the time? 10.29. Okay. We're doing okay. I want to see what's up top. I'm also tempted to find out if I can fall off of it and die. Whoa, what is this? Okay, I feel like this will probably be where, uh, or might be where the story sort of culminates in its ending atop this weird ass thing. I, it has a name, but I can't ever remember what it is. Either way, it's cool and kind of spooky. Which is just kind of summing up everything in this game, really. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Wales of the Damned. Time? 10.38. Okay. We're getting close. We're almost ready. To either leave and come back, or talk to the guy that we want to talk to. Stanislav. I think was his name. Uh-huh. To the bottom floor! That flower looks entirely too pretty and nice for this thing. Or pattern, really. Looks like a flower from up high enough. And the music should change here in just a second. There it goes. Okay. Um, do you have padding on your coat? No. What's the termitary? Two massive buildings in the eastern part of the earth. The termitary marks the district's border. Beyond that, there is only the abattoir and then the steppe itself. People do not belong there. Why? Well, they just don't. It's not a people place. But someone has to work there, right? Some folk do. The steppe people, the butchers, that's way outside of your area of expertise, believe me. Uh, that was intriguing, my good man. I should also talk to these people more than once, because I have noticed... I, I, What I was under the impression was, uh, is that you talk to them once, they would say whatever they were going to say, and the choices you made were important because you'd only get the one chance to talk to them. Well, that doesn't seem to be true. If you just keep repeatedly speaking with them, then they'll have different things to say. Uh, much obliged to help me get around town. There's more than one town here. The first one is called the Bull Project. The second one, the offspring of the project, is the Districts. 
I mean the residential part itself. Not so long ago, the town also dropped anchor across the river, but I wouldn't go so far as to call that part a district too. It's just the polyhedron. That's what that thing is. The district's a peculiar way to call the, well, the town itself. Well, it just sort of came to be that way. The gullet and the guzzle, the Gorkhorn's tributaries, divide the town into three parts. Each of them consists of many separate courtyards, so maybe that's the reason. And what are those parts? The lower part adjacent to the abattoir is called Earth. The one between the gullet and the guzzle we call the knots. And the triangular promontory between the guzzle and the gorkhorn is the stone yard. That's intricate. District's names? The stone yard consists of two districts, the bridge square and the atrium, plus the mistress's tombs, of course. Earth has four residential districts, the skinners, the tanners, the hindquarters, and the crude sprawl in the middle. Is something wrong? I'm just not sure you need any of this. The knots have seven districts. The spleen, the marrow, the kine, the backbone, the mouth, the flank, and the gut. I don't suppose I need to go into further details. Surely the canes will show you around. They are expecting you, after all. Much obliged. Yeah, I don't actually think I need to know that. Uh, I mean, people will tell me what it is, but unless it labels my map with that kind of information, I can just use this to find my way around. And the time is 5 minutes to 11, so we're very, very close, and he's supposed to meet us here, in theory. No later than 11, I think is what he said? No, he told him 11, no later than midnight. Two more minutes. Just pace around outside for a couple seconds, and then we'll wander inside. 10.59. 11 o'clock. Right, I should have listened for the bell, that would have been the obvious marker. Okay, right through here, if I talk to you again. The town will meet its death at the hand of Simon's murderer. Okay, that much is certain. whose words can be trusted? I don't know for how long you will have to remain here, Doctor. You are most welcome to be my guest, even though I won't try to keep you. While you are here, though, and especially since you are trying to find out the truth, it is my duty to offer you a piece of advice. I'd be grateful for it. This remote place has a history of its own. There is not enough time to resell it to you, which is unfortunate, since it is the background of the town that may possibly justify some local conventions that will likely seem barbaric to an educated person like yourself. What traces did history leave in your society, then? There are three truths that rule this town. The three origins. Three ideas, if you like. For several generations, these three powers have been in conflict with each other. I suspect none of them can exist without the other two. Yet each of them still strives to dominate. Each of them has its own voice, too. Uh, tell me more. These voices are the ruling families, the co-owners of the Bull Project, who have been ruling the town for almost two centuries. Each one of the truths they represent is screaming at the top of its lungs, and in doing so, travesties whatever value it carries. Uh, who are they? The first voice is the Saburvos. Sabur Saburovs. The second is the Olgimskis, the third one is us, the Canes. We are the three heads of one beast. Each of the clans will offer their own understanding of what is going on. Each of the three will use their own voice and the voices of their followers to lie and distort the truth. We cannot exist otherwise. However, in doing so, we will inadvertently reveal the entirety of the truth to anyone who would listen. So I'm surrounded by lies. Uh, how exciting. Truth is my only idol. It is f only for the truth that I fight. Well, no one will dare lie to your face. I have no doubts everyone will tell you the truth, but they will tell it in such a fashion that this truth will conceal the reality better than any deception would. The only thing I'm asking is that you don't jump to conclusions, compare different versions. Your extraordinary intelligence will allow you to ascertain the truth. That inspires hope. Furthermore, each of us will try to paint a rather ungainly picture of the other two. Most likely we will fill you in on the negative sides of each other faction and withhold anything that is good about them. That is inevitable. None of us will stoop to outright slander, so everything that will be said will most likely be true, but this truth will be one-sided and incomplete. Listen carefully to what we say and take it into account. Your words are a pleasant surprise, Judge. The stories of the evil that the Canes have unleashed unto this world are partially true. Do not feel obliged to act in our favor. As you can see, I will stop before nothing to ensure an unbiased investigation. The lack of prejudice I want to instill in you is the one and only reason why I am making a confession like this. I do not want my brother to have died in vain. Okay. I will take your word seriously. Do not worry. Okay. And furthermore, Stanislav does not seem to be here, so I'm pretty sure he's not going to show up until 11 p.m. in about 12 hours. So, I'm kind of just killing time at this point. Um... 
So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head back to Evie Yan's place because I believe my exhaustion is starting to build up a... Well, actually, it's not that bad, is it? Okay. Huh. Well, let's go see if we can find a fountain, and we're gonna take a look at the shops. Another thing I did notice uh, that I probably could have figured out earlier is any of these slightly discolored buildings seem to be shops. So that one right there should be a shop. And lo and behold, there's a sign right out front. Well, I'm not really sure what that sign would indicate, so let's go find out what he's got for sale. Hi there. You carry painkillers, alpha tablets, and tourniquet. Some expensive stuff you got here. Painkiller rather than a sleeping draft, restore a small amount of health. Good for restoring strength during sleep. Strong sedative effect and induces sleep even during excruciating pain. Lasts for five hours. Um, I think I already have a dose of that, so I don't need another one right now. Um, but it's good to know that there is a, I don't know, pharmacist outside of Evie Yan's place. Um, the town hall has fountains, that much I know. Anything in here? More bottles. Man, there's so many bottles. I love it. I could be trading those for so many bandages if I need them. Assuming, of course, that I can find people who will actually have bandages on them. Uh, a couple more bins over here. No. And no. Okay. So we'll head across and go to... Let's see. The town hall is up there. That's kind of a long ways away, but... We'll go visit some more shops along the way. Maybe stop at the town theater. See what's playing. Mm -hmm. So many things to learn about this game. Uh, map. Yeah. Okay. Damn it. I keep doing that. I forget, uh, if you've got another screen open, as soon as you start moving, it closes the screen. But out of habit, I try to close the map before I start moving, or as I'm moving, and so I wind up taking a step and then reopening the map. So this should be a shop. But this one does not seem to want to let me in. Okay, so we'll keep heading. Although I suppose if there's more than one entrance, it's possible that one of the doors is locked, but the rest of it is still open to me. Um, ah, maybe over here? There we go. What do you have? You'll sell me a needle and kerosene. Um, well, as crazy as it is, I am going to spend the money to buy the needles. Because they're relatively inexpensive, and later on, I might need those to barter with small children. If you read the description of the needle, apparently there's a town custom that prevents children from owning sharp objects. And so offering them needles is sort of like a currency that you use to trade in for bullets or whatever else they might be carrying. So that's the town theater, right? Yes. And there's another shop up ahead of me. And more bins! With more water, bleh, bleh, water bottles. I only picked up one of those. Give me both. Thank you. Bins all over the place. And more bottles. Good lord, I have nine of them? Is there a limit to how many of these things I can carry? Can I go inside? No, not right now. Oh. Oh, okay. So those ones... Fountains you can drink from, um, but there are also pumps which you can use to fill up the water bottles. You, do you have bandages? How about we barter? You don't have bandages. Okay, so you're still not worth anything to me. And you're probably just going to sell more of the same, but we should investigate anyway. What do you got? Drugs? You got drugs, but I don't need drugs. So that tells me that one. Um, where am I? Over here. Uh, I want to keep going up. Keep heading north. Because I need to find a pump. And I am pretty sure there's one around here. I 
thought there was. Ah, right there. There's a pump. Pump, 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 pump. Also, thankfully, using the pump fills up all of your bottles at once, so you don't have to do them individually. Okay, what's this? Silver ring, crafted somewhat roughly. Still looks quite valuable to do its age. Rings with ornaments of this kind are sometimes found in southern burial mounds. Okay. Huh. Oh, all right. Um. Whoa. That's super creepy looking. But whatever. Um, are you still not going to have anything? Yep, you got nothing. I kind of wonder if the game basically treats all of them with the same appearance as the same person. Shops seem to have different inventory from time to time. The food ones, most notably. But these guys, not one of them has actually had bandages on him. I was hoping to trade away two or three bottles of water and have a stock of bandages in case I need it. But apparently not. Okay, so it's only noon. Um, I'm going to head back to Eva Yan's. And I'm going to rest up. So, yeah. Okay, I'm going to get there. I will cut out the middle part because I'm not really planning on doing anything interesting. So I'll see you guys in just a second once we've gotten to Eva's. Ah, uh, the house of the lovely Eva Yan. Okay. What do you have to say? Anything new? Can you new? feel how rapid my heartbeat is? Sure. Very little time has passed, but I feel hungry and exhausted again. So, since you've decided to fight death, you will have to be very careful. It's September. You'll be dying with every breath of air. We are all dying with every second of our life. It's exactly this annoying phenomenon that I have challenged. But since you've heard of Fanatica's achievements, I'm not going to waste your time monologuing. You got me wrong. You will be dying here much faster than in the capital. Your body is wasting away just as fast as a boat sinks with its hold full of water. Breathe in this air. Can you feel it? But why? The steppe is full of various herbs. They fill the air with dizzying vapors. White whip, twire, and swervery are dangerous in August and September, when herbs surrender their juices to the sun. People tend to get headaches this time of year. Heart sufferers lie in bed with pains. My heart aches too. How do you people live here? Twire is a rare herb, so it's usually so usually it's bearable, but this year it's unbelievably plentiful. The elderly say that this is phenomenal. Nothing like this has happened before. They think it's a bad omen. Well, I don't believe that, but the air is droning. Can't you feel it? Don't you feel dizzy? Yeah, the air is heavy. You need to sleep often. Never go hungry. Drink more water. You need to look after yourself properly. If you feel sick, forget everything else and get some rest. Otherwise, you may die of a heart attack or bleeding. Be careful, all right? The more I think and do, the faster I die. That's symbolism if I ever saw it. Have I anything had else? A feeling you would come. I can't hear anything. Okay. So, having done that, my exhaustion is almost at half. My hunger's built up a little bit. Quiet phone. Sorry, guys. Should have silenced that a long time ago. So, we're going to go ahead and rest in the bed. Sleep for six hours. Our exhaustion will go down. Our hunger will go up. But more importantly, it'll blow through a whole bunch of time. Okay, now, ugh, suddenly I'm really hungry. Let me go ahead and do the rations thing. So if we eat this, hunger goes down a little bit. Let's try the meat, which is supposed to be a little dangerous, and the milk probably is too, but we're doing it anyway. So is my infection fine? Yeah, and my immunity seems to be pretty much okay. Um, drinking water, I believe, also helps. Although I'm going to save that, we're going to go and find a fountain. And I'll see if I can reduce my hunger a bit by drinking out of the fountains. I think there was one nearby, wasn't there? Maybe it's across the bridge. And this is the area I kind of need to be in, but we'll go... Huh. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was across the bridge. I'm not sure. Hmm. Anyway, guys, I'm actually all out of time for this episode. So what I'm going to do in the meantime is I'm going to go ahead, root around in the dumpsters a little bit more, kill a little more time. Uh, I'll fill up any more water bottles, try to bring my hunger back down a little bit more, and basically just prepare for 11 o'clock. And we'll pick up the next episode at the Canes at 11, when we're ready to meet Stanislav and investigate the body. So... If everyone's enjoying the series, please let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the section below. And as always, I'll see everyone in the next video. Catch you guys later.